Tottenham Hotspur travel to the Etihad on Sunday for Manchester City against Spurs. That was Spurs manager and Poster Coglu talking about his philosophy and you know his persistence in sticking with the way that he's playing and you know his tactics. I just see a clip uh, from Benty just go up on uh, the Talk Sport uh, Twitter. If you want to check it out, go to at Talk Sport on Twitter. Him talking about. Um, you know, the, the tactics and, you know, possibly being naive. Um, you, you alluded to it just before we, we, we paused there, Rory, about Ange and, and changing things. Going to the Etihad and playing the big Ange, Ange ball, do you think it's dangerous? Yeah, I, I disagree with what he said there. I think it was interesting listening to what he said, but if you actually analyse it, he said all the big teams will have a plan and they will stick to it. I don't necessarily think that's true. I think that a lot of big teams will have a plan they'll stick to it and then if it's not working they will be pragmatic like one of the best managers I've ever seen I think one of the best managers the Premier League's ever seen Jose Mourinho he had a plan certainly but as soon as that plan didn't work there was a plan B there was a plan C he would twist it he would tweak it he would make it work in fairness I do recall against Olympiacos in the Champions League we started we turned it down he took Eric Dyer off after 23 minutes and goes you go, yeah. I had to sacrifice you sorry oh yeah there's low like in terms of like Mourinho being really pragmatic like he subbed the sub he brought Joe Cole on once it didn't work he took him off you know he subbed the sub mm-hmm. so so no I think I think pragmatism is is a key ingredient for all top tier football managers and I I like Postacoglu and I do admire his his resolution and his desire to play his particular brand of football but ultimately if you don't shake it up at all if you don't have a plan B you're going to become very predictable and you're going to become you're going to become very easy it's going to be very easy to beat you if if tottenham and this is this is a fact here a fact ahead of ahead of the game if tottenham go into that man city game with the expansive open progressive style of football that antipostokoglu has played so far this season they get battered the game's over as a contest before half time okay so you know you're talking about the other option what is the other option then the other option is let's use a chelsea game here as a case study things are going really well for Tottenham, then they go wrong. Sendings off, Chelsea score, injuries, it's all going wrong. Defending on the halfway line with Eric Dyer as one of your centre-halves, when you're playing against the Chelsea team, who are notoriously bad at breaking down teams who defend. Like Chelsea, Chelsea this season, up until that game, had played quite well against teams that attack them. For example, for example, Arsenal, for example, Liverpool. They played incredibly badly against teams that had sat back. For example, Nottingham Forest or Brentford. So surely, the answer is, you're down to nine men. Things aren't going well. You have an unbeaten record to preserve at that point. Surely you go, look, we're playing Chelsea. Chelsea struggled to score goals when, when teams sit back. Let's sit back. What you can't do against players like Mikhailo Mudrik and Nicholas Jackson, who I don't rate, really. But the one thing that they are, non-negotiably, is swift. They are rapid footballers. Don't put Eric Dyer on the halfway line because it will only end in one way and that one way is four goals conceded. But the one way, okay, and I'm going to play devil's advocate here, right? We nearly, when we had a goal disallowed, which mm. was, uh, should have been a goal, in mm. my opinion. Uh, you had Ben Tancor, who should have finished his dinner at that, that moment at the back post. And Son went one-on-one at the end as well. It nearly worked. And the thing is as well, it's been such near misses for Poster Coglu in the last f- three games that he's lost. The Chelsea one, you know, as we said, it went crazy. But we nearly even drew that with you with nine men right then the Wolves one typical Spurs and I'll come to why in a moment then the Aston Villa game if we finish those three chances in the first six minutes the game's over it's becoming a bit of a theme here mate d- three three different games you said if nearly yeah, if, maybe if nearly, but then, yeah. then the people at the top have to do their job and finish if you're going to play that style mm. expansive football you have to take the chances from the off I sat there in that Villa game and I went as 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 he hit the post, as something else happened. Don't forget as well. In that first five minutes, Brian Hill was assaulted in in the penalty area. Yeah. If Romero does that to someone else, he's getting sent off and getting banned. But this is just some of the luck. This is the the, the, the luck that you might have in football sometimes. And sometimes it goes your way. Sometimes it doesn't. But I will tell you what, Madge, you're, you look. You're a Tottenham season mm-hmm. ticket holder, okay? Let's let's analyse it. I understand that Tottenham have a tradition of playing open football. I know that you like the game to be played in a particular way, you know, with a homage to to Paul Gascoigne and Chris Waddle and whatever else. But surely you're going to play Manchester City, a team that score goals for fun. Do you not want to see your team 
defend resolutely and try and nick something. We can't because I'll tell you why. Eric Dyer, Emerson Royale and Ben Davies played for Tottenham Hotspur. <laughs> Let's head over to someone who I still wished for played for Tottenham Hotspur. It's not the same guy, but he shares the name of our world, which is Toby. Toby joins us on the show. Good evening, Toby. Evening, guys. How are you? Uh, I do wish you was Toby out of our that we could play you tomorrow, <laughs> sir, because it would be looking a lot better, wouldn't it? It would be looking a lot better. Yeah, you're right. Uh, because having Dyer and Davies as a back two is uh, is not fantastic. Um, well, Toby, you can you, but, listen yeah. as a Spurs season ticket holder myself. You can really understand this because I don't think uh, the, the rest of the league understand the Dyer, the Davies, the Royals of this world and what what we've seen. How how bad it is when no, when they I mean, play bad. I, I called up after the uh, the Chelsea game and spoke to Rory and um, uh, and Jason Tunney and I explained basically what you just said. I think uh, with nine men for what was 45 minutes in the end, I think no matter who we had at the back, whether it was the full backs of uh, the back line full back that we had uh, last game or if we played where we did Eric Dyer and Hoiberg at centre backs at one point, we were going to concede one goal in that 45 minutes. 100%. If we sit back that was going to happen. We've seen the script a million times as far as it just does happen. That sounds, like, that sounds like a fact that really benefits you at the moment, though, Toby. That sounds like... Well, no, you're I'll, you're I'll saying you, that you guarantee to... I'll tell, you what, I'll tell you the guarantee, because Liverpool defended very, yeah. very well against us. Mm. And ironically, we scored I'll tell you, I'll tell, but, but the guarantee could go the other way. Chelsea, Chelsea couldn't score against Brentford when they sat back. We couldn't score against Villa. How many players did they have on the pitch? They had 11. But, 11. but presumably, it's different. presumably... It's different. But they didn't defend as an 11. They probably defended as a 9. But they still defended with 11 men. They still had an outlet to hold up the ball. It's but different. Ultimately, we can't break teams down, Toby. And you saying that you were definitely going to concede. We I think it makes you feel better because you conceded <laughs> a load and you went for the jugular. I, I mean, I, I would have agreed with you if we hadn't had the chances to take our, as well. We didn't just defend on the high line for, for no reason. We had success from it as well. We had the Eric Dyer chance for that came from a free kick. We won high up. They got called offside. And like you said, with the um, uh, the Son chance one on one at the end, Benton Kerr should have scored. If we didn't have those chances, I, I would agree with you that the high line was useless and we should have just sat back and defended. Do you but want to it, see an attacking it, side? Do you want to see a t- an attacking setup when you play Man City? Uh, no, no. I mean, I've I've got my head screwed on in that sense. In that <laughs> I think you're right. But we if we play our expansive football and progressive football, we will get punished, and it will be five four five one. But I think that I think I'd like to see and on Sunday play a style of football that is sort of recognisable. It's similar, but at the same time, we're not throwing numbers forward every time. We pick and choose our moments to do it. Um, and I think hopefully, if we do something like that. We might see a better side. I'm, look, I'm not expecting to get a result out of it, but I'm, I'd, I'd like to see a better, a better showing, to be honest, um, out of the 90 minutes. But I, I disagree with what you were saying, though, with the with the ifs and buts uh, with the last three games, um, because I think the Chelsea game is an anomaly. That was, I mean, I've never seen anything like that. Um, and then the the Wolves game is the bad one. That's the yeah. one that we got mm. terribly wrong. Because um, we didn't even play well like, going forward that game, Toby. No, exactly. I mean, I, I, that, that is the one that's a problem uh, for me. The other two, if you actually watch it, I don't have a problem. Things are going to go wrong. We're going to have off days. That happens in every team for every season. Toby, you know when you think about the Chelsea game, you know when you think about what happened against Chelsea, it's all very well kind of, you know, I think, I think what's been flagged, it's the injuries, you know, and that was incredibly unlucky. The injuries that happened that day, James Madison going off is obviously a nightmare for Hans Postecoglou and for yourself, similar with Van der Ven. Does it trouble you at all that it looked like Tottenham as a club, maybe the fans as well in the stadium, I don't know if you were there, but maybe you can shed some light if you were, it all got too emotional. Like, why is Adogi getting sent off like that? Why is Romero getting sent off like that? It feels you like when you play I'll Chelsea, you. there's an issue. No, no, no. That game, the referee got it so wrong. The first 15 minutes, and the reason mm. James Madison got injured is because your mob were kicking in the back of us every time we received the ball to feet. Sounds you, like an emotional response here. Yeah. They, you you <laughs> sucked us I mean? in. You did, definitely. I mean? But the referee... It's professionalism. Let me tell you, at the Emirates, when we played Arsenal, the referee was bang on because he gave a dogie a yellow card after about 15 minutes, and he had to re- the rest of the game deal with Saka on a yellow card. He calmed the yeah. atmosphere down. That night, Toby, was you at the Chelsea game? I was, yeah. Yeah, he, he created that energy. That energy was created, I'm telling you, by lack of decisions because we were screaming, like, pull them up, pull them up, where's the cards? Mm. But I do understand what you're saying. It does get a little bit emotional. Thank you to Toby there. Brilliant call. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.